day everyone and welcome to an episode of Ramble Shrapnel, the little bits and pieces of the main episode of Ramble Shamble, if you guys have not watched that. You will probably be a little bit confused and listen to this podcast episode, but we're happy that you're here anyway. I'd like to start off with saying thank you for listening to us. Uh, I don't think we say thank you enough and it's really something special if you're listening to our little episode of our podcast. Now, again, we are joined by the stupendous Jotun. Say hi to your, hi to our listeners, Jotun. Hello, listeners. Oh, isn't that nice? Now, my audience, this I is... hear you eating your popcorn, <laughs> popcorn in the background there. All that popcorn, you know that yeah. popcorn. Now, we, we all know that, well, I hope you guys know, because this is quite a later down the line. So... The shrapnels of the main episode, which I've said it already, so it's a bit of redundant. I'm saying it anyways, because the main episode of this was hum- humanity's future, or the future of humanity. That's the correct way of saying it. And we had a really great comment from our friend Raspberry, who suggested something which we would quite, which it sparked in the, uh, an interest in our conversation of today, which was, which media likely depicts the future of humanity? or the best likely depiction of humanity. However you would like to rephrase that word, the same. Obviously, they don't quite all, both mean the same thing, but we'll stick with which media likely depicts the future of humanity. And this this could be anything to even songs if you really want to, but I don't think we get much resources from songs. <laughs> like Star Wars, Star Trek could be a possibility, but again, uh, I, as much as I want to swing around a giant laser sword and cut to chop away droids and lift things with my mere presence of mind i don't think that's gonna wait, be wait a... wait why doesn't star wars work well i, th- I think it would be a very 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 far future if possible because we would have to a no, no. evolution would have to come into it <laughs> okay go ahead your turn you, you start so since you see what is <laughs> what is the first line of the star wars crawler like the text that goes by in a galaxy far, far away. Isn't it also in the past that Star Wars happened? No. No. Oh, okay. No, no, no. In a galaxy then. far, far away. <laughs> okay, then, then Star Wars could actually happen. Yeah, Star Wars is an option, even Star Trek. Um, So uh, I think I will go first because I know th- this... Uh, I, have faith that Jotun has the bulk of the content for this little chat. But I think our future will be basically, um, well, the the media that best depicts it, I wouldn't say Jetsons, because Jetsons is quite a very optimistic point of view, but I my hope is like Orville or Star Trek. I uh, know Orville is really just a spin-off of Star Trek, but let's say Star Trek for sex and purposes. Star Trek would is the most likely future. Where humanity were, it, why I say that is because it depicts a really interesting way where humanity has moved on from Earth, which Elon Musk is trying to desperately do that. And it also, it's at a stage where humanity is no longer the trying to self sustain and that kind of thing, where humanity is actually more into exploration and growing and uh, communicating with other life and that kind of thing. So, I just love that kind of idea where humanity is not like a subspecies like we discussed in the main episode where they actually are beneficial, obviously not as powerful or smart as other beings could be, but that that would be my top choice, 100% top choice. I I disagree, first of all. Go for it. Purely because of the fact that in Star Trek, Star Trek, they're still using smartphones but i think we're gonna get past smartphones oh 100 <laughs> yeah. percent. So just because of that i gotta say i don't ah, think it's no. gonna be star trek you found okay. the one thing that depicts that destroys my entire idea even though it's, it's star wars they also use the same thing and it's, it's far far in the future <laughs> it's, it's the one it's the one little block that that's gonna make the whole jenga tower fall my friend but it, isn't it like in like alien isolation as well where they have all this futuristic tech, they're in space, they're like flying different planets and stuff, and they still have like the green monitor screens with like the uh, BIOS or the proper like C coding thing, and you have to like tap 
tap, 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 tap. It's like no screensavers, no nothing like that. It's, 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 it's obviously at the time that was like high tech technology, but yeah, that now was we look back the, at it. It's... <laughs> movie was made in the eighties. Yeah. And that, that is, that is not top tier technology anymore. Eh? <laughs> yeah. So I think the, the most likely outcome would actually be more along the lines of cyberpunk 2077. Oh, good one. Oh, that's such a good one. Yeah, I, I recently watched the Netflix series, although I've never played the game. But it, uh, that's how I view things going in our future, is that we would augment our body and we would also augment our mind. Um, but yeah. then you you get to the whole uh, ship of Theseus of the argument of, like, you can replace the, the planks of a ship one by one until eventually none of the original pieces of the ship from like its maiden voyage is on the ship anymore but then because it was uh replacing pieces of the ship the whole time it's still the sh it's still the same ship like there's that flow of time or uh or whatever that means it's still the same entity it's just that none of the individual parts is from the original but um yeah so i think that's also true of like the whole cyberpunk thing is that will it really be humanity if there's no human part inside of the people anymore stop sending my idea from uh alien life actually we did discuss it in this episode as well where i said that the entities like cyborgs would be well, I discussed the po the possibility of like a cyborg race, where initially they were human, like uh, Jotun says, and but they will be replacing more and more of their organic life away. That they still have the appearance of human, human, but inside they're nothing left but like robotics and uh, gizmos and everything. But now that you mentioned cyberpunk, uh, like a close competitor to that would be Juice X Machina. I'm not sure. Have you do you know Juice X? Deus Ex, yeah. Deus, yeah. That's that's follows well, a very similar line as what you stated there, but I yeah. think Cyberpunk plays a better role. I, I'll have to give you there. I think Cyberpunk is a, a much they they do a much more interesting story. But I, but I but I think the way in which they do it better is because of the fact that, well, I'm I'm not I'm personally not that familiar with Deus Ex, but in cyberpunk they're like replacing entire limbs and things as well yeah, happens like, in DSA. yeah like it, it actually looks weird like where the guy's shoulder is there's basically just uh like a lid or a cap or something that covers the <laughs> stump and then yeah. you can plug and play basically any kind of mechanical arm to the stump um and they, you, you basically replace the entire body um and i think that with deus ex it's like there's a certain amount of human that has to remain um yeah but i i i do think that that is the way we're gonna go but another one would actually maybe be ghost in the shell um i don't I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's an anime thing. I'm not. Thing. I'm not. Go for it. So I think that in Ghost of the Shell, they make androids. So not, not cyborg. Cyborg is where, I think, where you have people and you make them more machine down the line. Mm. Whereas android is a machine that you try to make as human as possible. And yeah. now... The reason why the series is called Ghost in the Shell, at least this is what I, this is just my reasoning because it's long ago since I watched it, is that, <laughs> is that you can make something so faithful towards the image and the functioning of a human being that eventually a soul will arise inside of that android um, and it will start to have its own motivations and its own consciousness as well and i think that that's also a very likely outcome for humanity and artificial general intelligence because when you can get something that's sufficiently complex enough 
I believe that it will have consciousness as an emergent feature. It wasn't planned for, but it will arise just because the system is that complex. Mm. No, I, I, I agree with you there. It's wow. That's actually a really interesting way to think of it. Yeah, well, dude, I believe that like the universe is conscious. I believe that galaxies are conscious. <laughs> I believe I believe that atoms are com uh, are conscious as well. It's just, just like each screaming each, each individual <laughs> each ind individual system that is complex enough and has enough constituent parts. I believe is conscious um, because it it develops consciousness as an emergent feature. Now think which of how many which, galaxies. Which... Which uh, Felix did not quite agree universe. with you there. Yeah, he didn't agree there. But because but that's... It's, it's a very awkward way to think. Because then, technically, if that is the case, then the chewing gum that I have in front of me is also technically conscious because that's made of atoms, and me biting it is technically as much as a vegan can be a vegan. They are technically eating little things, which is technically true because they're eating plants. So, <laughs> so like, well. Atoms, so the reason why I think that atoms are conscious is because they happen on the microscopic level. Um, yeah, and but they still their make constituent up parts are on the nanoscopic level. And then our human brains, I, I think, are like the next rung above that, where atoms would have to be complex enough and have energy transmit somehow between those individual atoms uh, to form a, a more complex system and then a universe is above that as well I mean a galaxy and then the universe so mm. it all has to do with scale there's like a, a yeah. threshold there's a threshold of scale that needs to be bypassed before the next level of a system uh, that can develop consciousness is possible well i i would agree with you but at the same time i don't 100 percent agree it's a it's a, it's a definitely something that is really hard to prove uh because obviously uh, we work with a lot of inanimate objects and like you say uh atom by itself is limited to so much and because our brains are so complex but uh, it's quite hard because then it comes to the definition of consciousness and that's where things get a bit more wonky because then how do you define consciousness? It's like, um, what? How do you classify something? 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 Um, yeah. But I want to. I want to pose another media one well, that is possible well, as well, which we well, didn't I'm quite a, cover. I'm a popularist in terms of my philosophy of science, so oh, I think that something needs. You're to You're popularist. Be you mean like your ideas are popular, or do you mean like no, you like popular. to fast? Uh, popular. Yeah, popular. Oh. He was a philosopher in the geez, 1600s or some crap like that. <laughs> well, I want to say... But he's basically uh, the one that says um, the best way to prove a theory is to try to disprove it and not the other well, way around, not like well, actively prove it. Well, that, that's why I said to you in multiple episodes already is that you can say something is that. I don't necessarily have to believe you, but I have to prove it wrong otherwise. Uh, like I said, in scientific. Where some scientists they state if the theory is too out there, it doesn't work. I'm also with you in that sense. Is that look, you're right until I can prove you wrong. Uh, I'm not saying that I just don't agree with the statement. Doesn't mean that you're wrong. 100% agree. You can believe whatever you wish. Um, so the the other media that I want to touch on, which is actually a really good uh, depiction of humanity's future, is Mad Max. I'm not sure if you played that game. Yeah. I have. Oh, that <laughs> game. Oh, that game is such an amazing depiction of like a dystopia humanity's future. And it's a possibility because in that whole game, everything, all water had dissolved or retracted or gone away. And now you you see like this humanity is like devolved into proper like cannibalism or uh, into these like more like people where like water is like as precious as gold. Oh, I think that is a great depiction. Even the movies, not the latest one, but even some of the movies are like really wow. Really the latest out there one concepts. Was 
the the latest one was a cinematic masterpiece, dude. Like the cinematic, the color, but the color grading and things yeah. like that. In terms of yeah. the story, though, I thought the story was lacking for me. That's my personal opinion, at least. Well, yeah, I guess so. The 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 story, like they shouldn't have called it Mad Max. Oh, 100%. Uh, they, they, be, but they called it Mad Max. Yeah, be, <laughs> so it, it, that's my one gripe with it. They should have called it something like Furiosa. Because everybody... Oh, that would have been good. Yeah, I think everybody went into it expecting this to be another story of Mad Max. But he just ended up being a supporting side character. Whereas... Oh, 100%. Yeah, whereas the original trilogy with Mal Gibson was actual episodes in Mad Max's life. He was the main character. Yeah, and that that's like... It's 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 blue-balling the idea because obviously if they put it Port of Furiosa like you suggested, I don't think it would get in as much advertising and publicity. So I think that they just kind of included Mad Max because obviously his title brings in the, the Monet. Yeah. But I think that's where we'll, we'll wrap up this episode. Obviously, the, the, the oh, reason, do you have an idea? The, go for it. the reason why they they needed to use the term Mad Max was that they wanted to keep it inside that world. Mm, mm. But they could have still they could have made it any world. What like, I guess yeah. But you could have said like maybe make Mad Max like you say keep the title, but then keep Mad Max in terms of like a like a character that is having his story on the sideline. Like, not by a sideline, I mean, like, yeah. having this story somewhere else, but it's cohesive in the same universe. So you know that Mad yeah. Max it could be making an appearance, so that would definitely get me to come watch. But he, he he's having a cameo. Exactly, a cameo. But He basically is a cameo, to be honest. Exactly. So don't call him Mad Max. Call him, like, Terminator. It doesn't need Arnold, but everyone wants Arnold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think that's is the... The, as much time as we can dedicate to a Shrapnel episode. If you guys did like this, definitely give us a, li a like and a five-star rating. And let us know if you want to hear a more detailed version of this topic in a Ramble Shamble video which is, or episode, because that is roughly 50 to an hour, and we can talk a lot more about these different media concepts. There's Terminator, there's a lot of depictions of humanity's dystopia or utopia futures, which whichever end of the spectrum you guys are more interested in. Feel free to comment in our Discord, our YouTube, uh, any other communication, but our Discord is probably the best place for you to speak to us. And again, this is Mackie posting this episode of Ramble Shrapnel, the little bits and pieces of the main episode of Ramble Shamble, joined by my co-host, co Yotin. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.